Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chat episode 336, uh, featuring a review of Siege of Dragonspear, the long-awaited expansion to Baldur's Gate 1. Now this game fits in between Baldur's Gate 1 and Baldur's Gate 2. It's Baldur's Gate 1.5, basically. And if you're a fan of the Baldur's Gate series, it's definitely something you should check out. Now there has been some uh, political controversy around this game. We'll get into that a little bit here, but really what I want to focus on is just the game itself and whether or not it's something you would uh, want to play or not. Anyway, we've got a lot to cover here, so without further ado, here is Siege of Dragon Spear. Only weeks ago, the malevolent Saravak brought the city of Baldur's Gate to the edge of destruction. You, like him, are a child of Baal, the dead god of murder. Baal foresaw his own death and sired mortal children in an effort to bring about his return. Saravak intended to become the new lord of murder. You put an end to Saravak's plans and slew your half-brother. With his passing, you became known as the hero of Baldur's Gate. Now, a new threat casts a shadow over the city. A massive army on a holy crusade has thrown the Sword Coast into turmoil. Little is known of the crusade's leader, the charismatic warrior Kalar Argent. Those who follow her revere her as the Shining Lady, but her background and goals are shrouded in mystery. Some say she is divine, a hero sent by the gods to crush evil no matter the cost. Others whisper that she is another spawn of Baal, intent on following the same path as Saravok. One thing above all else is clear. If the Sword Coast is to find any measure of peace, Kalar Argent must be stopped. And if that doesn't get your hamster excited, I don't know what will. This is Baldur's Gate 1.5, Siege of Dragon Spear. At long last, as you probably know, Baldur's Gate is my favorite CRPG series. I consider Baldur's Gate 2 to be the best CRPG of all time, so of course I was very excited to play this game by Beamdog. Huge questions, though, about whether it holds up to the legacy, whether they might have overdone it a touch with the social justice stuff. I'll get into that later, but for now, I'm just glad to be back in the world of Baldur's Gate. Pick out an awesome looking hero here. Let's see, which one of these guys looks sexy enough to... That's it. Yeah, that's the one. Okay, now I have to pick a race. We've got African American, a Asian... No, I'm just kidding. The standard races. Standard classes with a few nice touches and class kits. It's been a while since I played the Baldur's Gate series, so I'm not quite sure what's new and what's was already there in the enhanced editions, but I really like this idea of a jester. Uh, it just appeals to my personality, I guess. Okay, get a quick roll. I got really lucky there too with a total roll of 90. Man, I could have rolled that, uh, rolled these dice uh, for an hour and not gotten that, and I got it right off. So this seems kind of uh, a good sign, right? Uh, let's see. I think those stats look pretty good for a bard. I'm not really interested in maxing, min-maxing, that sort of thing. I just want to have a good time here. It's okay, my character doesn't have to be perfect. Now this is the part of the game that's kind of screwed up, because you don't really know what would be the best weapon to be proficient in, because you haven't played the game yet, and you don't know what items are in there. You just have to trust that there's at least one awesome everything in the game somewhere. So if you want to specialize in longbow, that seemed like a pretty safe bet. Longsword seems pretty safe. Halberd or Bastard Sword, though, who knows, you know? You might go through the whole game and only find a plus one. Now I get to pick out some spells, and of course I want to think about, this guy's a bard, he's not a standard mage, so that will have some uh, impact. Normally I wouldn't pick out something like Burning Hands, because I keep my mages well out of harm's way. But this mage uh, should have some better armor. He should be a little closer to the front line, he might actually get to use some of these things. Uh, plus, I think the Burning Hands will be useful, because I happen to play this game a little bit, and I know there are lots of trolls. 
And trolls won't die just by hitting them with a hammer or a sword. You have to burn them up. So burning hands will be useful. Uh, picking out some other spells here. I really want to get ghost armor. It seems to be a useful spell to me. It's better than the uh, armor you can wear. And I like the uh, these reflected image type spells, which will basically keep you alive if you do happen to get in into the thick of the battle. Uh, the problem with all the uh, these uh, Infinity Engine games is, of course, the AoEs are very hard to control. As you'll see when I get into the game here, man. It's like your characters, they just love it to run right into the middle of your AoE. They see you casting a fireball, man, they are right there at the spot. But I'll try to work around that limitation. Weird thing here, I'm trying to pick my voice. Being a hero is hard work. Time to rest. And I don't see a male jester. I just see jovial. I had a female jester. Where's the male jester? I don't know. Maybe it's the same thing. Uh, now we have to pick a difficulty level. And to tell you the truth, I think the game is uh, hard enough with normal. Uh, the core rules, anything harder than that to me just seems designed more to frustrate you than anything else. So I just stick to, to uh, normal. Looks dead. Everything's a mess. We should have gotten out of the city days ago. No chance of that now. But Corlage knows what she's doing and... Hey, did you hear that? We'd better tell the boss. Come on. So, of course, this game is picking right up, right after Baldur's Gate 1. Ugh. Smells like moldy bones down here. Bones and evil. That is the stench which Minsk sniffs. Ah, Minsk. Well, here we are in a creepy old tomb again. The last of Saravok's followers are down here. According to the Flaming Fist, all you gotta do is find their leader and bring her to justice. Yeah, I remember one's back and Dinah. They're mostly mercenaries, led by a wizard named Corlaz. This is her family's tomb. She aided Saravok, and the Grand Dukes want her dead or alive. We'd better be careful. I really want to. I wouldn't be much help, though. Ever since I asked Duke Janath to teach me how to sling spells, she's had me cooped up in the stuffy old library, studying boring books about the weave. She only let me come down here after I promised to bring her any arcane scrolls or tomes I could find. I'll follow behind you with these flaming fists. If you need help with anything, just ask and I'll do what I can. There's a healer here too. Talk to her if you need any bandaging. She also knows all about fighting undead. Timora shine on you. Not that you'll need it. I can't tell if they assume that the people that bought this game would already be familiar with Baldur's Gate. It seems like they've got some information in this intro that would be for noobs. If that's you, if somehow you've never played Baldur's Gate 1 or <laughs> Baldur's Gate 2 and you're trying to play this first, what the hell are you thinking, man? Don't do that. Go play Baldur's Gate 1. And I would say play Baldur's Gate 2 and then come back to this. That's my advice anyway. Anyway, so nice uh, additions, innovations, whatever you want to call them here. I love the key ring. Uh, they've got the uh, gym bags and the you can get a bag of holding later on. So this won't be as uh, the inventory nightmare that Baldur's Gate 1 could be at times. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give my uh, Matt Radius. Love that name. Awesome name. I can't use that bow for some reason. I guess, oh, it's a composite longbow. <laughs> I'm too wimpy for the composite longbow. Magic is impressive, but now Minsk leads. Swords for everyone. Ah, uh, Minsk. How could you not like Minsk? Is there somebody out there who hates Minsk? Don't even, don't even watch my, my channel. All right. I think we're good. I might tweak these spells a little bit here. Whoa, she's got a... You know, this is why you really need to check out your party before you jump into things. I mean, all these empty slots. I could put some spells in there. I'm not sure if she needs armor or not. I think she might already have some bracers. They they pre-equipped your party. Problem with that, of course, you have to go in there and make sure that they're reasonably well equipped. Sometimes the designers 
I seem to want to screw with you. Like, why the heck does she need fire shield? Let's see. Monster summoning. Seemed like a better choice. Ooh. I guess I'm not quite ready for cloud kill. That'll be fun with this uh, AI nightmare. Entanglement. That's a good choice. And let's, uh... You know, I'm almost wondering if Flame Blade might be a good choice for her, but... Uh, before I was getting poisoned so much, I'm almost leaning towards just focusing on that. I'll get this zone of sweet air, too. More to, <laughs> more to clean up my own mistakes than anything else. Okay, I think we're pretty good to go. Now the question is, can I rest here? I'll try that a little bit later. I, think, I don't think I'm going to get attacked right away, so... Let's talk more fight! Exactly! Why are there horse blockades here? You're too late! It's already gone! Aren't you here for his sword? I thought... I would not be standing where that mage is standing, I can tell you that. I've said too much. All you need now is that not but death awaits you here. Turn back now while you still can. Yeah, I bet a lot of people took his advice and just quit the game right there. Checking out the journal. Looks pretty good. Okay, let's get in here and get some battle. I hope there's some rats around here for me to fight. Uh, let's see, who is this? Three drops of lemon balm oil. <laughs> a half pinch of powdered silver. Appears to be a lunchroom lady. Okay, who are you? Is she in league with Corlaz? Putting a decent variety of responses like that. I am a researcher, I swear. The, the leader of the group here, um, Corlaz. Yes, I know her. I supplied her with some rare books in exchange for entry into this tomb. Oh, I'm creating an alchemical concoction to reveal magically concealed writings. Uh, a mercenary was supposed to guide me further into the tomb to fight the component I'm missing. Just now their leader summoned them away, though. She bid me stay here for my own safety. If you happen to come across Cobalt Moss and bring some to me, I'd be truly grateful. So all that was just to build up to a fetch quest. Yeah, I think they're overriding a little bit. Just let's move on. Okay. What is it? Some wine? These elixirs? A concoction. And another shelf. A demo book. And what do we have here? Oh, there's a gem bag. Now those are really, really nice to have. <laughs> Way more useful than you would think. So whatever you do, don't get rid of it. Need to identify this scroll, because I can't just read the scroll and see what it is. I have to identify it. Now there's some orders. Oh, now here's another nice uh, touch with this uh, enhanced edition. You can just copy these notes and then dump them on the ground. Uh, there's a couple of scrolls in the other games that might tell you, uh, you know, don't get rid of this, hold on to it. But I think we're safe getting rid of that, getting it out of the inventory. You don't have a lot of inventory to work with, so it's always good when you can put stuff down. I have to carry it around. Okay, I'm going to try to rest here and learn my new spells, but <laughs> that spider does not look too comforting. Nope, looks like I am in battle with a random group of skeleton archers. Shouldn't be too tough for my guys to handle. I'm not quite sure what to make of this enhanced AI yet. They seem to, my characters seem to make pretty good choices about what spells to cast, but you definitely can't trust it willy-nilly. You know, again, I several times had to stop a character from casting the fireball right onto the heads of the melee attackers and stuff like that, so... If you're going to play with that, I guess you need to be selective about what spells you have them have available. That protection from cold. Lasts for 12 hours. That's a good... Anything that lasts that long would be worth holding on to. 
<laughs> okay. Okay, it looks like I'm not gonna have any luck resting up here. Lots of these skeletons to fight off. I guess I could just keep doing this and get a couple of levels. And a pretty decent XP. But uh I kinda wanna move on out of the first room, so. Okay. I'll try one more time. I'm oh, getting some uh like some ice arrows there. Such creatures of evil must Alright, wow, finally. Okay. So now I can uh, cast some spells. Uh, I thought I thought I had a armor spell memorized for her. I probably don't need it since she's already got bracers. I don't. I'm pretty sure those bracers would be better than that basic armor spell, but she doesn't have ghost armor yet, so. Oh. <laughs> Oh man, there are lots of skeletons running around here. Okay, sorry about that. Did not expect to get attacked again, so. Oh, geez. Uh, let them finish up the battle. Yeah, use all my spells on this random encounter that I just <laughs> rested up to memorize. <laughs> okay. Well, at least I got some more ice arrows. Let's just forget it and move on. Ah, uh, there's a sarcophagus, looks like. So, more alcoves to check. Lots of identifying scrolls. What's this? A skull. I never know in these games whether to just get rid of the skull, try to sell it, is it a quest item? Sometimes it'll tell you, you know, don't get rid of this, it's important, but sometimes it won't, especially if it's an optional puzzle. So I tend to just hold on to everything, hoping that it serves some kind of purpose. Looks like we're fighting a tattered skeleton here. Must be a skeleton of a giant. Alright, 400 XP for that. And some more scrolls. A lot of these protection from elements scrolls in this all over the place. Uh, later on you'll get, or if you played a Baldur's Gate 1, you should have some scroll containers. I don't have them yet, so I'm just going to have to keep the ones I want. Otherwise I'll just clog up my inventory. A nice little touch. Look, we got some bats flying through, those, uh, through that chasm there. That's pretty cool. And it looks like we've got another little kerfuffle over here. Spellcaster. Probably want to get target him. Like there's maybe an ogre there? Yeah, there's an ogre. Well, it's like my guys aren't having any trouble at all dispatching these early encounters. Of course, the thing with Baldur's Gate, and it's very true for Siege of Dragon Spear as well. Don't ever get cocky. Away and you might survive this. Run away! Why do they even bother saying that? Okay, now for this battle, let's try some tactics here. What I would like to do is use a little bit of crowd control. These aren't that undead, so I should be able to use my uh, <laughs> my noxious cloud or stinking cloud. Maybe a web. Fireball. Okay. So did I... <laughs> it looks like I actually was able to pull it off. About half the time, those guys in the front rush right into the fireball. Oh, now this guy has used his mirror image to good effect. Let's see if he gets a spell out before I finish him off. Sometimes if they cast a confusion or something like that, they can really screw up your otherwise flawless victory. It's not the end of the world if your characters die. You can resurrect them later, but it's a big pain. You probably just want to reload instead. What is this? Cloak of Minor Arcana. This is like a pretty good cloak, but I don't want to have to get rid of my armor and Thacko bonus, so I guess I'll just hold on to that for now. And it looks like they put this stuff here. I guess if you don't like your layout, you can change up your armor type. It's not really very good stuff. Some ammo, that's a good, good idea to have that here. I'm get another longbow for Khalid. Uh, I guess... Looks like he's slowed. Anything else here? It's like just basic stuff. I could try to lug all this stuff and sell it later, but 
I don't think money is usually not that big of a problem. Yes, dear. <laughs> yes, dear. Okay, that's not going to get annoying. That's about the thousandth time you heard her say it, huh? This chasm sure looks deep. Do you feel warm air coming up from below? So it I do. Wonder what's down there. Don't put your nose under the blankets. That's my advice. You yes. So we've got another sarcophagus scenario here. It's gonna pop out this time. Go ahead, <laughs> pull him out. I wonder if these NPCs will join the fight. The Nagamoron. The Neganoron. Bang the Noron. Whoa, now this guy's not playing around. Looks like he's already got Minsk diseased. Oh, it's going down quick. There must be some kind of disease with a damage buff on it. And he's still losing health. I'm going to have to try to cure that. Pretty sure Jahira has a cure disease, but I think she's uh, currently running around. I lost myself. It won't happen again. I promise. Come on, Minsk is dying! To fight oh, Whew. all right. Get rid of that. All right. All right. Whew. That was a little tougher than I thought. Yes. Well, <laughs> without even thinking, I hit the uh, the rest button there. That was probably dumb, but I guess I got lucky. All right. Now I could put her armor spell on. Forgot to do that earlier as well. Uh, looks like it wasn't necessary though, because her bracers are just as good as the armor spell. So don't. Let's talk more. We've reached the catacombs. Watch your, if you need some advice on dealing with undead. The flaming fist healer might be able to help. She's a priestess of Lathander, and knows a lot about how to deal with restless spirits. It's the big deal, you flip and whack them with your weapons. Yes, dear. <laughs> like you need all this uh, advice about killing a skeleton, eh? I don't know what I'm missing there. <laughs> Maybe we should have gotten the advice. Okay, I think that's a pretty bad uh, fight coming up. Looks like I've already tripped a trap as well. Uh, Stefana, Stefana's trap detection really seems to suck, at least at the beginning. I mean, you have to be right under a trap before she notices it. Oh yeah, this is a pretty nasty fight here. Of course, they're targeting her. Move her back a little bit. Let's see. You want to keep an eye on the, the tech scroll as well, because sometimes, uh, especially if they have protection against normal weapons, you won't actually be doing any damage to them. So you probably want to notice that before you waste all your arrows. But it's not really good there. Yeah. That's a familiar image. I'm sure there must be other traps around here. Let's see if I can get old uh, Sweetheart here to scout ahead. Heal her up a little bit. Oh, crap. Yeah, those trap detection skills aren't what they never were. I wish I had ammo in here. See, recruitment officer. So yeah, one of the things you'll notice in this game is that they, they did a pretty good job, I think, making the your nemesis not as clearly evil as Saravok was. Now, there's a lot more moral ambiguity there because uh, I guess everybody that plays these damn games nowadays just craves moral ambiguity. You know, we have to be so complicated. I just want to kill rats. All right, protection from poison. That, <laughs> oh, now that scroll. I definitely don't want to lose that because Poisons in this game are terrible, and that gives me immunity from them for uh, 12 hours. Going to definitely use that later. Let's get out of here. Let's see. Where do I want to go? I'm not sure if there, there may be some secret entrances around here. Sometimes if you stand against a wall, those will pop up. Doesn't look like it there. Now, if I was going to put a trap anywhere, though, I would put it on that bridge. 
Let's see. I'm having, having a little, <laughs> some mouse issues there for a second. Let's see. A cascade of boiling lava. Okay, there's another group of undead. These look like zombies or ghouls and gas. Let's see what spells I have available. What I really like to do is uh, hit them with webs and then just put everybody on archery duty. Just pick them off one by one, but that can be pretty tricky to, to do because, again, if you don't aim it right, you'll just ensnare your own archers. And then they're sitting ducks. I think I've got a couple of rings and a resist fear scroll. Want me? Right. Trying to detect these traps before I trap them. Uh, she seems to have some trouble in that area. I definitely want to raise up her uh, flying traps skill as soon as she levels up. I would plug it had I the power. There are just traps all over this place. I guess I, I heard a click, but I guess that one. Oh, she saved versus spell. Whew. And let's see. Grabbing up all this jewelry. There's another one of those skulls. <laughs> what is this, Halo? A splint mail. Let's see if old Matt here can use his lore skill. So that's a nice little trick. If your lore skill is high enough, you don't have to waste one of those identify spells or scrolls. Uh, let's see, what's the matter there? Wand of Fire. Very, very useful wand. Probably one of the best uh, ones, in my opinion, because uh, that instant fireball. <laughs> Uh, that can really turn the tide in, in a battle. Talk I just want to show you this. So this is one of the game's puzzles. So you can see there's these uh, different colors of flame. And you can uh, find a torch here and change the colors by going over there to those flames. I'm not going to spoil the, the puzzle for you. but Though I can see in the dark, I still prefer the surface. I like those little touches like that. Man, I just cannot detect a trap to save my ass. Take it like a champ. All right, here's some more. What are these things? Shadows. Uh, they're doing cold damage, looks like. And they got Khalid slowed down, so he's probably only doing about half as well as he would normally. You know, some of these battles, uh. They do feel difficult in that you might be doing fine one second and the next thing you know somebody's hit with a hold spell or gets poisoned and they, they die before you can really react. Uh, but overall, it, it feels pretty good, the, the combat balance to me. You definitely will be doing some reloading, but I don't think I have reloaded as many times with this as I did with the first part of the game. Oh, that was a nasty little trap. So it looks like I've learned some, got some new spells here. Always love adding spells to my spell book. Another, another really nice innovation. I'm not sure when they added this, but that red diamond on the interface, uh, that will bring up the this row of uh, item slots. Right. And if I get close to loot, well, those will fill up, and I can just click, click, click. You know, add it to my whatever the active character's inventory is. Uh, it doesn't seem like a big deal, but it saves a lot of time. <laughs> they got like a million traps in this place, and then they stick you with a bad, you know, a thief with low uh, trap ability. I recognize that potion. Again, I promise. Yeah, I probably will. All right, so this is, uh, so far, I guess I'm probably, what, about half an hour in? I... You know, so far, to me at least, this doesn't feel like it would be out of place, you know, as a dungeon well, in uh, one you of the other Baldur's Gate games. Place. It's definitely difficult, and I'm getting enough uh, loot and items here to keep me going, keep me interested in what's around the next corner. You know, I'm really starting to think I would have been better off getting him a crossbow, because I keep finding all these awesome uh, crossbow bolts everywhere. I think we've probably played enough of the introduction here. Yeah, it seems exciting enough. It's, uh, gets you right into the action again, so to speak. And there's some, uh, I guess, would you call this a puzzle? <laughs> it's, uh, it's pretty, uh, pretty obvious what the solution to that one is. But let's move on here. 
I want to show you what all this fuss is about. I am Mizena, faithful of Tempus. Praise be to the Lord of Battles. So as you can see, one of my options is to ask her about her name. When I was born, my parents thought me a boy and raised me as such. In time, we all came to understand I was truly a woman. I created my new name from syllables of different languages. All have special meaning to me. It is the truest reflection of who I am. So you notice I don't have a dialogue option that would be disapproving of her story. Or some kind of anti-transgender comment I could make, anything along those lines. So basically, some people felt like that was just a little too politically correct. And of course there's another line, uh, they had Minsk saying some kind of Gamergate reference. Uh, they took that out. A lot of this alleged fury is really about things that aren't in the game, but were discussions from the developers and stuff in the media. Uh, so if what you saw there doesn't really bother you, I don't think this is going to be a big deal for you at all. So, moving on. They mock me! Me! This cannot stand. This will not stand. <laughs> now that was uh, a timely encounter, giving that little discussion, huh? Alright, so I want to just show you a little bit more of the game. Uh, there's a character up here somewhere. Fight these You're spiders first, now. but she's a, gom a goblin shaman. And she's my favorite character, or favorite of the new characters so far. So I definitely wanted to show you that sequence. Come one, come all. See the cream of the Sword Coast's combatant crop. Witness the brilliant and bizarre battles in the black pits of the one and only Baloth the Entertainer! Gather in the gallery, my gallants. Tis time for another test twixt two titanic terrors in Baloth's blackest pit yet. Fate favors you fortunate few who witness these feral foes in a furious fray. First, I give you the wild wonder of the Western Kingdoms. Wise men say only fools rush in to face the Wolverine. <laughs> There's the rat. But what wily wonder could conceivably win a war against the Wolverine? There is but one answer. That hardy, hate-filled horror, the Honey Badger! Ah, oh, the Honey Badger. I guess that joke just never gets old. I bid the battle begin! Entertainment, cause I do Me mum and me dad have had better fights than this of a midwinter dinner. Where's the blood? Where's the furious patience, my peculiarly profound patrons? The primitive play you propose will be presented. Do I know you? I love the, the meta humor here. <laughs> Pretty sure I killed you once. Ah, it's moderately mortifying to see you again. But the past is past, and these people pine for a performance. And so I give you... The Goblin! Let me out of here, Drow! Let me out! You'll have your freedom, my freakish friend. But first, you must fight for it. Maglobia, take you, Nightskin! Let me out! Silence, you simpering scullion!
think on this a tick, noble one. Have you ever met a goblin that didn't thirst for the thrill of the fray? Free me, snake. Recognize your role, you repellent wretch. I am the entertainer. I speak. You watch and applaud. Or remove yourself if you'd rather. I cannot concede to such contemptible, nay, criminal coercion. I'll concede you, silver hair. of a goblin what a woeful waste my guess is chris avalon must have had something to do with all, with all of this scenario here because you really see a lot of his trademarks here uh, i think you're really delving far more deeply into this concept of the alignment uh, than you do in other parts of the game i mean you can see how both of these characters in their minds are acting perfectly you know in line they're doing the right thing, so to speak, but they're, uh, the results are quite spectacularly the opposite. And I also think the, I like the dialogue and the, you know, all the, uh, the funny options. It's a good mix of humor, but at the same time seriousness and getting to see the shaman abilities in a very uh, nice demonstration. Uh, you know, I think, you know, if, if the whole game had maintained this level of writing, I think we'd have a undisputed uh, hit on our hands, but... You know, I'm not saying the rest is bad, but this this was a high point. You know, let's put it that way. I just wish there was a way for you to have both these characters in your party. I think that would be some really interesting role-playing possibilities, but at least I couldn't figure out how to do it. You know, I could have one or the other, but not both. Uh, if you know a way, though, for you to have uh, both of them in there, please let me know, because I'd like to try that out. Anyway, let's uh, wrap this up. I'll show you my uh, latest save, and then we'll call it quits. All right, so at this point, I'm trying to get to Dragonspear Castle, taking these underground caves. And there's a dragon here that seems to be guarding the door, but uh, yet again, there's some kind of weirdness going on. A little bit more to the story, and I appreciate that. Uh, I also like this area just because it was a nice, uh, nice change. <laughs> Still, even at this point, though, just walking right into these traps. Uh, they, I, they really need to... Uh, beef up that fine traps, make it the range a little bit more or something. Uh, it's a pretty good battle coming up here. I actually ordered the collector's edition and I'm patiently getting a little impatient about you know when that might come in. I wanted to show it to you in this video but I, I don't know if it's anywhere close to being uh, made yet. Uh, but anyway I'll uh, review that portion of it <laughs> if and when I get it in probably a Matt Chat news segment so stay tuned for that. Anyway, as always, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the game. You can just sound off in the uh, YouTube comments or on Twitter or Facebook, however you want to uh, to do that. But I'd like to hear your thoughts. But anyway, there you have it. Baldur's Gate Siege of Dragon Spear at long last. We're <laughs> playing Baldur's Gate again. Uh, so you got to love that, if nothing else. Uh, it's available at the Beamdog site, at GOG and Steam, and I'll put the links in the show notes if you want to purchase it yourself. So thanks for watching. And that's all for this week's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed that. <laughs> I should be back next week with the first part in a new a series of interviews with Mr. Julian Gollop of XCOM fame. Uh, now, as you might know, the video got screwed up on that, but the audio is fine, and I'll, I'll do my best to make it interesting to watch as well. Anyway, you definitely don't want to miss the interview because he really covers some interesting stuff in there. 
All right, let's see. Oh, uh, as always, I want to thank you very, 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 very much for your support of the show. Really means a lot to me, guys. You have no idea. I just really appreciate your help. Uh, you know, you're keeping these episodes coming. Uh, if you like the show, you want to support it, just go to that link in the show notes to the Patreon site. And there, for as little as a buck a week, a buck an episode, you keep these episodes coming, and there will be zero danger of Mad Chat ever being canceled. So, uh, thanks to everyone for your support. Okay, let's see. What about that news from the Matt Cave? So this first news item was sent in by Shane. I know this will be exciting for a lot of you, uh, you folks out there. There's a, uh, a couple of new C64 consoles coming out. Uh, one is a desktop console, and the other is a handheld console. It's $150 for the computer one, $170 for the handheld one. And that's a, an Indiegogo campaign. And I'll let you go check that out and learn more there. But it looks like it's, it's a pretty good, a pretty well-established team. So I'm very excited about that. Uh, and then Adam sent in this link to Philippe Pepe's, uh, we know him, uh, from the History of the Quest Compass and its Dreadful Convenience, which was published on Gamma Suture recently. Uh, so if you uh, like or dislike the Quest Compass and what that represents, I think you really enjoy uh, Philippe's article. So I'll put a link to that in the show notes, so go check that out. And I think that will do it for the news. <laughs> so what about that Ale of the Week? Man, if I ever needed an ale after a game review, I think it's for this game. All right, so what have I got here is uh, Stone Pet Potascala Red X IPA. A massively dry hop deep, deep crimson IPA. <laughs> that sounds uh, really nice right about now. Let's see. Pet Ascala, Pet Potascala, Potascala. What the hell's going on in this bottle? Uh, this beer was first brewed in September 2015 to support music and arts education programs in Potascala, Ohio, where Stone co-founder Greg Koch grew up. Let's see. Heavily dry hopped with mosaic, cascade, and amarillo, amarillo hops. Amarillo? <laughs> uh, this beer is incredibly citrus forward, rounded out by notes of biscuit and toffee from the malt bill. Oh, my goodness. Uh, we think you'll find it to be deliciously satisfying. Let's see, uh, sometimes they put those uh, international bitterness units on here. I was looking for that. 7.3% uh, alcohol by volume, so a little bit on the high side, but, but not crazy. Uh, let's see, I don't see the uh, IBUs on it, so I'll just have to make my best guess. <laughs> just basically tell you if I think it's too bitter or not. How about that? Anyway, let's get this thing open and see what it's all about. All right, so I got some of the Stone Pasta Cala Red X IPA here in the rather excellent drinking horn. Really nice color. <laughs> I know you can't see the color here, but hopefully in that picture you saw the nice, the sort of coppery color, which is exactly what I would expect from a red IPA. Uh, smells really good. You get a lot of citrus, a lot of uh, a lemon, and uh, you smell the hops as well. Again, this is one of those where I don't know how in the world you could smell this and not want to immediately uh, drink some of it. It just smells really nice. So let's give it a taste. A really nice body on this one. Uh, this one is very sort of thick texture. Uh, you get a lot of that hoppiness, uh, hoppiness right away. A little bit of a, a smooth kind of malty finish, I would say, on this. Actually quite nice. It's definitely uh, full flavored too, so you get a lot of taste right away. And then it just sort of gradually eases off. So this is one you could really sip on for a while. Try it again here. Yeah, a really good taste on this. It's, it is a little bit on the bitter side. Maybe just a little bit more bitter than I would uh, prefer, but you know, I guess I shouldn't be drinking uh, IPAs if I feel that way about bitterness. I'd say the, uh, uh, the description on the bottle about the, uh, the citrus, what do they call it, a citrus forward or something like that, uh, seems pretty accurate. I mean, that's what I taste right away is the citrus. 
and then the hoppiness and then the kind of a malty uh, finish on it. It's actually uh, quite nice. I'll try it one more time here. Yeah, all in all, it seems like a very nice choice. It's, uh, I think the red part of it gives it a couple of uh, uh, interesting uh, complexities that you wouldn't get with a standard IPA. Uh, there's a, I can tell there's a little bit more going on here with the flavor than uh, I'm familiar with. Uh, but all in all, I would just say it's a pretty solid uh, choice for an IPA. Uh, I'm going to go uh, really close here, but I, I think I'm going to go four out of five drinking horns on this. Uh, a very solid choice, and it's, it's something you could really drink uh, slowly and enjoy it. A lot of uh, lingering flavors and so on and so forth. So uh, four out of five drinking horns for the Stone Potiscala Red X IPA. All right, let's wrap this up with a quotation. And I was looking up for quotations about tolerance, and I found this one from Samuel Taylor Coleridge. It seemed to fit the bill. It goes something like this. I have seen great intolerance shown in support of tolerance. <laughs> so wrap your head around that one and see you guys next week. Now, the sort of person we're looking for is an aggressive, drunken lout with the intelligence of a four-year-old and the sexual sophistication of a donkey. <laughs>